powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us this Tuesday. I'm Janelle Slade. Jay is off tonight. With just two months until Election Day, campaign teams are working harder than ever to gather votes needed for November. And for the GOP, that means another visit from President Donald Trump to stump for Senate candidate Matt Rosendale in his race against Senator John Tester. Now, this will be Trump's second trip to the Magic City, but the first as president. Trump will hold a rally for Rosendale at Rimrock Auto Arena beginning at 7 o'clock Thursday evening. Metro Park officials are expecting up to 10,000 people to attend. Doors will open at 4, but people can start lining up much earlier in the day, even though temperatures are expected to climb into the 80s. If you plan on attending, you are encouraged to arrive early as parking will be a challenge. The Billings Police Department already well into preparations for the president's visit. The chief says it will be all hands on deck Thursday with all available officers working. Of course, while many of the department's resources must focus on the president's visit, the city must still staff for its normal day-to-day -day, day -day business. First and foremost, we want to have an, an excellent visit. We want to make sure that everybody's safe, uh, not only the protectee, but the public. Uh, we anticipate some protesters, so we want to make sure that that is handled appropriately, that they have their, uh, their right to, uh, to free speech and, and expression. Uh, yet we want to make sure that that doesn't infringe on anybody else's rights. So big task for the police department and our partners, but we're looking forward to it. And Chief St. John says one of the biggest hits to the department, the overtime cost for having so many officers on duty for reference, the vice president's visit cost taxpayers $20,000 in overtime. Well, it's going to be a complicated turnaround at the Home Improvement Show is scheduled to kick off at Metro Park Expo Center starting Friday morning. Now, the Expo Center just 300 feet from where the president will be standing the night before. That means vendors will need to hustle with limited access and time to set up on Thursday. Promoter Mark Hadeen says Thursday is usually when vendors do the bulk of their setup. Initially, they were told they would have to be out of the building by noon Thursday for Secret Service to move in. But as of this afternoon, the staff at Metro says it was able to extend that time until 3 p.m. Thursday. But getting the word out to more than 450 vendors is another major task. Thank goodness for emails and for texting because we can do a lot of people as far as getting information to them in a shorter period of time. But unfortunately, not everybody reads their emails or their texts. So I know because of this, we're going to have some confusion on Thursday. But I do want to say everyone is working hand in hand in trying to get this uh, to pull off. And, you know, 10 years from now, we'll be able to joke about it. So the Home Improvement Show runs Friday through Sunday again at the Metro Park Expo Center. The hearing to confirm President Trump's Supreme Court nominee is finally underway. Brett Kavanaugh appeared before the Senate Judiciary Committee for the first time Tuesday, and lawmakers on both sides squared off. Mola Lenghi has the latest from Capitol Hill. Brett Kavanaugh delivered his opening statement hours after his nomination hearing for the Supreme Court began. My judicial philosophy is straightforward. A judge must be independent and must interpret the law, not make the law. Democrats demanded a delay in the hearing over the White House's refusal to release all documents from Kavanaugh's time during the Bush administration. Just common sense says we should have access to thoroughly evaluate this person. Late Monday, the Senate Judiciary Committee received about 42,000 documents, leaving them little time to review them. It's hard to take seriously their claim that somehow they can't do their job when they've already made up their mind before the hearing. There's nothing fair about that. Inside the chamber, Senate lawmakers also dealt with angry protesters who repeatedly tried to interrupt the day's events. Judge Kavanaugh is one of the most distinguished judges. Mr. Chairman, I think we ought to have this, this loudmouth removed. Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein used her opening remarks to argue the future of abortion rights is at stake. The president that nominated you has said, I will nominate someone who is anti-choice, and pro-gun. And we believe what he said. But Republicans pushed back. They don't have substantive points strong enough to derail this nomination. Over the next few days, Kavanaugh is expected to face questions on a wide range of issues, including affirmative action and executive authority. Republicans would like to have Kavanaugh take the bench by the 1st of October.
Mola Lenghi, CBS News, Capitol Hill. If confirmed, Kavanaugh would replace re retired Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy. Here at home, a 17-year-old Billings High School student charged with five counts of rape pleaded not guilty this morning in Yellowstone County District Court. Braden Pond is charged as an adult for the alleged crimes back in 2017. Pond was never booked into jail and today in court was not given a bond, but instead was placed into a, an alternative setting. According to School District 2 Superintendent Greg Upham, Pond has also been suspended from school. Pond is accused of raping or sexually assaulting five different teenage girls during five incidents spanning from February 2017 to May 2017. Now, each charge is a felony and carries four to 100 years in prison. A big decision is coming to voters in Bighorn County this November as county commissioners seek to expand the local jail. And they're promising voters it won't raise their taxes a dime. The current jail in Hardin was built in 1979. There are rusty walls, exposed wire mesh on the ceiling, and unused steel sticking out in places that under Sheriff Michael Foos says inmates use to make weapons. Commissioners will ask voters for the authority to borrow up to $7.3 million to build onto the current jail to house 96 inmates. In addition to $5 million, the county already has from coal royalty money. But we'll use those dollars to pay for the loan. You know, and short of coal stopping tomorrow, you know, that's nat natural resource. Money will be available for us to pay off the loan. Lack of fire suppression I have in the jail. Um, the lack of natural lighting they have in the jail. Um, the de deterioration of the jail itself. Um, and the overcrowding. You'll see how many people are jammed in into one unit. Bighorn County tried to pass a bond for a jail expansion back in 2016, which voters denied. If you're wondering why the county doesn't use the vacant Hardin Two Rivers prison building, well, Commissioner George Realbird says it is too big and it is too expensive to operate. Turning to weather, Bob McGuire fire season isn't over yet. How are things looking across the rest of the state? Well, it's hard to believe. A couple of weeks ago, the the, the fire was dangerous really yes. high. And that has since then has really calmed down, but now it's starting back up again. Let me show you our fire danger map, as you can see here. We start off here, and there it is. Uh, most of Montana really not doing too bad. Low to moderate fire danger, but we're starting to see some high to very high creep into some parts of the state, places like around the Billings area in south central Montana. Also into Yellowstone National Park, starting to see some uh, high fire danger there. Same thing in the southwest corner of the state, all the way up the Butte, and also up in the Kalispell area, up in northwestern Montana, we have high to very high fire danger there. But everywhere else in Montana, actually, it's kind of calmed down because of recent rainfall. We'll see what happens. We're starting to dry out again, so I think those fire dangers will probably go up all over the state in the weeks to come. We'll have more on your weekend forecast and your week ahead forecast in a few more minutes, you know? All right, thanks so much, Bob. Coming up on tonight's 10 o'clock news, Libby, Montana, cleaning up its act. Find out more about this historic action. Plus, Nike's latest ad campaign is going up in flames. We'll show you. And later in sports, meet the hard-hitting duo, helping your Mustangs make a return trip to the playoffs. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.